Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's RTC TV4 coverage as the Pioneer Panthers come to the Comet Crater to play the cast and comets. I'm Blair Zimmerman, and uh, I'll have Alex Korn here on the other headset with me shortly. He's uh, trying to get into the facility. Uh, we've got quite the crowd gathering with such a uh, close kind of a rivalry game here. So uh, the uh, teams come in tonight. Uh, Kasten unfortunately sitting at an 0-3 record. And uh, Pioneer Panthers sitting at 2-1. and They uh, lost their opener against Lewis Cass, and then they seem to have come back with a vengeance after that. So uh, we're going to have to see what the Comets can do this evening to try to hold these Panthers at bay. So we've got about just under two minutes here before kickoff. We're going to take an opportunity to uh, thank our sponsors as uh, we wait for the opening kick here at the Comet Crater. You're watching Comets and Panthers football on Caston TV on RTC TV4. Save money when you switch your home phone service to VoIP from RTC. Everyone knows that RTC Fiber Communication is the area's leading provider of high-speed fiber optic internet service. Now, RTC can help save you money on your monthly phone bill by switching your phone over to the internet with VoIP. Same great service at a fraction of the cost. Contact RTC today to find out more about this money-saving offer. Online at www.rtc1.com. Enjoy full screen television viewing of the new RTC TV4 family of networks anywhere you are with our new Roku channel. Simply purchase a Roku device from RTC or any Roku retailer, connect to your in-home Wi-Fi, then download the RTC TV4 channel. It's that easy. Watch all of our live channels 24-7 for free or subscribe to view all of our videos at your convenience. The RTC TV4 channel on Roku, another great service from RTC. The RTC TV4 family of networks allows you to watch nine local television channels dedicated to coverage of our schools and our communities directly on your mobile device through our new app. Just look up RTC TV4 at the App Store or the Google Play Store. There is no cost to download the app or cost to view the live channels. With a paid subscription, you can also view any of our past videos on demand whenever you want. Download the app today and start watching. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're getting ready here for opening kickoff. Alex made it through the gate. Uh, Alex, there's a, a few more fans than normal here with such a close rivalry game. Yeah, and that always is the case, and uh, you can look over across the field there. Pioneer travels very well. I mean, Absolutely. Given their recent history, you can imagine that uh, you're more than likely to make the bus, I guess, to <laughs> say. Well, and I've got to say, I I'm just – I was looking at John Harrell's stats, and mm. they are predict predicting a 56-0 Pioneer advantage. And uh, I've got to say that Pioneer just since that opening season opener loss mm -hmm. to uh, Lewis Cass, as a matter of fact, I said it right before the uh, break, uh, they just seem like they've been out for blood. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, well, it's uh, Coach Barry's second loss in his coaching career, so you can only imagine that uh, right. it wasn't taken too well. Right, absolutely. Now, I have heard uh, scuttlebutt this morning after morning weights was that uh, one of the Llewellyn twins is out this evening with a shoulder injury. Hmm. Um, of course, uh, that, you know, when we sit here and look at the roster and they've got at least twice the roster depth that we do, that, <laughs> once again, I, I understand uh, Coach Slocum's not wrong. There's 11 guys on the field yep. for each team, you know, ex until you have a guy who takes himself off the field without telling anybody. <laughs> That's another story. Um, but, but both teams have 11 guys on the field at mm -hmm. any one time. The, the difference is how fresh are those guys. Right. Uh, the difference is how much natural ability do yep. they have. So, um, and, of course, Pioneer has, over the last 30 years, 30-plus 30 years, mm -hmm. become a football legacy yeah. school. <laughs> yes. Um, I was just thinking about that on my way over here. You have, what, almost 20 years of Coach Johnson since mid-'90s? Yeah, that sounds right. Um, and then now you have uh, – his protege, I guess you can call him, Coach Barry, he uh, played quarterback for Coach Johnson. Okay. So you see there's kind of like a coaching tree over there at Pioneer where, you know, you got Coach Johnson and Coach Bianco. They all played for Coach – well, they, Coach Barry and Coach Bianco all played for 
Mr. Johnson, who's now at Logan Sport. And, uh, right. You see the, the greatness didn't take a step back. Absolutely, it, it yeah. picked up, if anything. Well, here's the kickoff. And they onside it. Hmm. Covered up there by uh, Grant 56. Hickle. Now, I will say, uh, looking at picking up the roster and seeing a Hickle, um, Gavin Hickle is in 54 tonight. Okay. He's uh, he switched out of his fullback position, and uh, they're trying to – Trying to make some magic happen with mm -hmm. these ever thinning ranks. Yeah. So let's see. Uh, we have Landon here running to the huddle. You said it was a die that was out. Number I, 15. I see number five on the field for Pioneer. So it, it must be a die. Um, I right. was. It was actually uh, Sam Duvall who was telling me that. Of course, what's funny is with as much of a rivalry as this is, mm -hmm. uh, and and with as with as uh, competitive as football players yep. tend to be. They, yep. don't, they, they tend to really have a deep rivalry against other schools. Yep. Off the field, I think that a lot of these guys actually like each other. Yeah, yep. Well, Pioneer's got a lot of great kids. I mean, obviously, Mr. Kaiser, who is now at Notre Dame, was right. a great guy. You have, you know, a lot of, as it looks like, Caston fumbled the ball. And Pioneer's taking over. You have a lot of great kids on both sides sides of the ball here. They um, try hard academically. They want to see their community do well. Right. It's Pioneer here in the shotgun with a Ezra. Oh, that was a beautiful pass. Yeah. And a nice cover up there by uh, Landon Schaefer on that tackle. What was that, 15, 20 yards on yeah, that pass? Yeah, like it looked pretty just good. Nice flat pass, open he, route there. He, last year and you know in previous years, we've seen that he can run the ball, but now we've shown that he can throw the ball as well. So we have him lining up in the gun again. Of course, this is a shotgun wing tee. We mentioned in the past couple of weeks that it's been all wing tee here in the region for many years. This Shane Love there dragging him down. Nice quarterback keeper. What did he get on that? Seven, eight yards? Yep. Yeah, maybe not quite that many. Still, so, nice run there. <laughs> well, I've got to say, uh, my first uh, interaction or, or exposure to the Llewellyn Twins was in uh, middle school track mm. when I was coaching, and we went over there. And I don't know if it was Ezra or Adai, but ran and, and did like a 19-foot long <laughs> jump. It just... Such athleticism yep. out of the Llewellyns. Yep. You see we have the under under center wing tee here, and that looks like the old cross block play for a good chunk of yards and a first down. Carried there by uh, senior Derek Weyerman. Yep. Well, Here's that's another thing. Look at the number of seniors. Yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. everybody talked about how much they lost last year, but not a lot of people were talking about what they what came back. Well, and they had quite a bit come back. Once again, though, that goes into 20, 30 however many years yep. it's been of legacy and where you know you have elementary kids in the pioneer school district saying yep. i'm going to go to high school yep. and play pioneer football yep. so we have a waggle play completed pass to, to logan smith And of course, we have a lot of familiar names here. You have the Mersh last name. And that's an old family over there, at Royal Center. Well, and this this drive here by Pioneer is just kind of that. There was a, there were a couple of bigger plays, mm -hmm. but six, eight yep. yards of play. It'll get you to the end zone before you know it. Pass is complete. That was number eight for the reception. Diego. I believe so. Badalo. Maybe Badalo. Maybe yeah. it might be uh, an exchange today. Yeah. Uh -huh. Your guess is as good as mine. Well, and if you're a Pioneer fan tuning in and you've never had the uh, misfortune of listening to me commentate, I will butcher <laughs> so many names tonight, you will lose count. No, you're right. We do have a pretty good crowd show up for both sides of the ball here. Oh, absolutely. It's... It's encouraging to watch the... Uh, and they go for two here. That's 
And it's good. Miles Von Tobel with the reception. Not even two minutes off the clock here, Alex. I uh, I think uh, John Harrell might have been uh, maybe even generous with uh, that 56-0. Well, he was, he was right last week in the Cast and Triton game calling it 41, but he was wrong with the 27. Right. So maybe he's wrong with... It's hard saying, yep. and, and let's face it, it's all guesstimation. You, yep. you can use a lot of good numbers, mm -hmm. but all it takes is, uh, let's look at West Central. Yeah. Uh, how would that game have been different if Aiden Sarver didn't right. tear yeah. his ACL? Yep. You know, we don't know. And and now I'm not wishing ill on anybody mm -hmm. out on the field. I'm just saying that one injury can change yep. the face of a game. Yep. Now, maybe it'll take more than one with that kind of bench depth. <laughs> Yeah, they still have quite a few juniors and sophomores there standing on the sideline watching. <laughs> oh, yeah. That is just an incredible number of helmets at the top of mm -hmm. your screen there. It's just – it's such a, a beautiful night, too. Yeah, uh, the storm passed by way early in the day. Yeah, last night uh, – well, yesterday afternoon, of course, coaching cross country, I, I live tried, I have to live pretty close to the weather. And <laughs> early in the day, I said, oh, 20% chance of rain. I was like, good, we're going to go outside. Yep. I, I ate outside at lunch yesterday, and then right at 3.30, <laughs> that nasty storm cell yep. went through. You it heard was, that lightning crack? That was, it was great. <laughs> it wasn't great. We were in the weight room. I didn't <laughs> like it. Here we have 56, Oscar Solano kicking off. Another short kick and covered. And by Pioneer, looks like they got it. That might have been, yeah. They were trying to cover, uh, Greg Brault trying to cover that up, but they got a funny bounce on that football. Yep. And Pioneer's coming up yep. with it, it looks like. Number 10, Derek Wireman. I'm kind of curious as to why, I mean, I don't know if that's, been pioneer strategy, kicking it like that this whole season. Obviously, this is our first game. Um, but they clearly on-sided it the first time, and maybe they were trying to cover that spread. Well, I wasn't even looking at the backfield, but if you look at our traditional backfield lineup, that's where we put yep. you know, Sam Smith and yep. Landon and, and Hunter. Right. So... It's a solid strategy for them to take those guys out of the play. That was number 10, Wireman, off the outside. And that's close. I think it's going to be a second and a couple blades of grass. You know, one thing I noticed uh, the first time I came out and commentated football last season is that it's a lot easier when you're watching TV and they've got that the line, line projected <laughs> across the field. So here we have Ezra lining up under center. Now I'm expecting toss left here. They motion the fullback, and that's what they do. That's been a staple of Pioneer football for about 20 years. Some good blocking going on. It's and Von Tobel. Nice tackle there by number 21, Caden Webb. There's a name that I've been saying a yep. lot this season. A uh, freshman pulling his weight and some. <laughs> well, during the scrimmage, I watched him. He was on the close side of the field mm -hmm. and ran a fella down on the far mm -hmm. sideline across like 30, 40 yards. Nice. I said, uh, uh, in fact, I complimented him on that yesterday. They were joking around in the hallway saying, yeah, you need to run track. He said, I about had an asthma attack. <laughs> That's fine. We can have your inhaler at the finish line, man. <laughs> Keeper there by Ezra. Boy, Shane Lobb and uh, Schaefer just kind of mm -hmm. spun them like a helicopter blade. Pioneer already deep in Comets territory yep. for the second, second time. time, and we don't even have, even have four minutes off the clock yet, mm -hmm. Alex. Well, they are the reigning state champs for a reason. Absolutely. And there's that cross block play again. That's Wireman there. <laughs> Took nearly the whole cast in line to take yep. him down. Yeah, anybody who thought that the Pioneer was only dominant because of Jack Kaiser was absolutely incorrect. Yep, yep. So 
Let's see, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Pioneer's got more points than Caston's offense has plays on the field right now. I will yeah. Yep. Yeah, as a matter of fact, because yep. we had one play. Yep. Well, the second play resulted in a fumble, uh, and then Pioneer covered up their own kickoff, yep. so. Pushing up the middle. Didn't quite make it over the goal line. So now we have a second and seven. Second and goal from the seven. And they might even be closer to the goal than the seven. It's, yeah. it's about the five. With the shadows and everything yep. right now, it would be easier to see as the lights come on. Yep. So the running clock rule only kicks in after halftime, right? As soon as it's 35-point deficit. Really? Even yep. in the first half? Yep. And another and passing it. touchdown there to Diego Badalio. I, <laughs> maybe? As it looked like Pioneer had quite a few open receivers running along the back of the end zone. Put there. it on to that, into that same corner. Yep. And the, the thing is, though, is once again, now we're see we've seen passing plays, we've seen rushing plays, yep. and so the comments everybody has to do what they have to yep. do if they want to shut this down on. Yep. Them. And um, you know, so if somebody's having to pull his way and the guy next to him, mm -hmm. then Pioneer's just going to yep. put whatever points on the board they want to. And and no good there. No good on that two point attempt. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people want to talk about how hurt Pioneer football is after Kaiser graduated, but... I'm not seeing it. Yeah. Well, now in a way, without him being here, you have more of a more of an open approach, if you will, with other athletes stepping up. You know, you're not... You know, when it's fourth and two from the one, you know they're going to snap it to Kaiser and he's going to run right off the right tackle. But now you have, you know, a little bit more unpredictable nature to your offense, you know, shuffling different athletes around running a little bit more under center wing T, you know, doing a little bit more trickery and deception with your multiple athlete approach. Right. But that's not taken away from the success they've had. Oh, no, absolutely yeah. not. I mean, you you can't. Yeah. Uh, but I've always thought it was a little bit of a deficit, whether, whether a program has to or chooses to, mm -hmm. when you make one athlete the focus. Mm -hmm. Um in some ways it's it's unfair to that athlete and it's unfair to the program yep. because you're 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 every place telegraphed to a degree. Yep. Um of course, you know, obviously it's gonna go through the quarterback. Yep. But you know <laughs> what I'm saying. Yep. Um So we have Pioneer getting set to kick off. And then of course if a program goes through one or two people because they have to, that's mm -hmm. who they have to rely yep. on. Once again you just know what's gonna do. A little bit deeper on that kickoff. Brault getting it and getting tangled up at the Comets 37 yard line. I wonder what Coach Slocum's got dialed up here. You're down 14 nothing to a team that's ranked what? Sixth and two A. Right. Pretty good. State state champs. They've got state competitors and uh track on the offensive and defensive side of the ball in the Llewellyn Twins. And talk about looking up a mountain. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, right now uh, Pioneer is rated second, ranked second in 2A. Oh, only second, okay. <laughs> I can't even tell. There were so many white jerseys there. I don't know who got the tackle there. Yeah, pick. Smith. I don't even know that he got back to the line of scrimmage. See, if I remember correctly, last year in this football game over at Royal Center, Kasson had negative 14 yards in the first half. That sounds yeah. right. Hopefully they don't repeat. So here you see Pioneer in their traditional forefront defense. They've been running that for about 25 years. And uh, a batted pass there by Schaefer. It, that dinged off. Of, I didn't see whose helmet that dinged off of. Look, but number seventy-six, maybe. It could have been. I know it was. Uh, it was a black and gold helmet. 
That'd be Colby Juby, senior there on the defensive line, 76. As we get set here for a third and long. Schaefer in the gun, Smith to his left. Schaefer had a little bit more time in the pocket that play than what he's had lately. Mm -hmm. Oh, pass just not quite complete there to Shane Lobb. And hearing the coaches yell and punt for Kasten. We're not even halfway through the first. We got quarterback, return specialist, you name it, you got it. Yeah. Ezra stepping back to return the punt here. A good punt. It was a nice looking punt. Funky bounce off the football. And he's gonna pick it up. And he's gonna make some moves and run around. And he is making those and moves. And he's gone, he he'll be in the end zone. That was Ezra. That, that was an amazing bit of juking yep. there. And there's Ezra Llewellyn there. Bobbing, weaving, juking, and jiving all the way. Yeah, uh, broke that tackle from Hunter Shanelob yep. and was uh, gone. I don't think anybody else got close. Nope. May, I'm, there might have been some fingertips maybe, brushing. Maybe Smith was there, but. Well, that was amazing for him to miss the catch, let it bounce back another 20 yards, pick it up, turn around. Yeah, he picked that up with what, the 15 yard yep, line? Yep. That would have been a, a great field position for the Commons defense yep. if Shane Lobb would have been able to wrap him up down there. Now here's Pioneer going for two. And they're gonna get it. That was number two, Logan Smith. Now, a question that I have that you probably can't answer. <laughs> Does Pioneer struggle with a kicker or is it just their MO to put two? I think they've historically struggled with kickers. And Kasten, I mean, and kick, the kicking game isn't very strong in high school football. And if we've, as we've noticed, I think Judson went for two every time. Right, um, I've, well, and this is one of the first years in recent memory that kasten has gone for the extra yeah, point. So, yeah. um, typically, Kasten usually gets some good foreigner that's good at soccer, and then right. we just talk him into kicking field goals, and that's panned out well. Um, I don't know if that's changed. Um, kicking field goals, I mean, it just takes extra time out of practice when right. you need to practice offense, you need to practice defense. and uh, Absolutely. That's one of those things that small school with a small coaching staff or high school with a yeah. limited coaching staff yep. in general um, and limited contact time. Yeah. Let, yep. Let's face it. The, College players, professional players especially, yep. don't really have an off season. Yeah, there are, I guarantee Vinatieri's out there kicking field goals probably right now practicing. Right, right. And, and he's got they've got coaches that yeah. that's all they do. Yep. So and then you get down, down to school as small as Caston where you and can't I believe have a dedicated necessarily dedicated. I kicker. believe going into as as we see here that Pioneer's got a new kicker. I can't see it. It looks like 15 on the back of the jersey. It is. Yeah. Oh, that's a die. Mr. So shoulder injuries here to do well, a kickoff. Uh, and again, I'm not. That's not gospel. That's what the rumor around the mill. Correct. And he's got a boot. Yeah, he does. That's going deep. His number nine went back to Tim, Tim Lee. Lee. Couldn't get a hold of it. He's oh, going to get. Pioneer's going to lick him pretty good. Yeah. What is that? That's behind the five. Yep. Or behind the ten. Mm. This box position isn't the greatest yep. for some of those <laughs> far corner. And I have to look at your computer monitor to see the scoreboard, because, or, or I'm leaning halfway out the window. <laughs> yeah, but going into this season, I believe Aiden was actually the intended kicker for Caston. And with, you know, you go into the season with one kicker, and then he gets right. hurt halfway through well, the first and game. I, I know that Dakota Oldfather is dressing as a kicker, and then Sam Smith does some kicking. Mm -hmm. So. I, once again, though, Sam is that kind of Swiss Army knife yeah. player. He's, yep. he, you know, I have a couple of those when, during track season. Yep. And it's like, hey, I need you to do this event this week. Yep. And you need Smith to block for the kick as Smith gets the ball here. And I don't think he's going anywhere. What are the odds of, of a touchback here? 
touchback or a safety? Safety, sorry. Yep, there we go. <laughs> It's uh, Friday the 13th. Do I know where my brain is? <laughs> well, I'm, hope, I'm hoping to say it's not very good, but with how Pioneer's defense is playing, I, we might see it. <laughs> and, of course, Kasten running the shotgun. It puts him even closer to the goal line. I think that we could safely call that pass intended for uh, Evan Howard. Hey, good to see Evan Howard back on the field tonight. He's been out with, uh, I believe it was an ankle sprain. If only Cass can get some more guys back. Oh, uh, yeah. It looked like the defense there was 14, which is uh, Von Tobel there was all over him. Or maybe that was 44. Yeah, Howard's the only one back. I'm looking here, trying to see in front of the cast and cheerleaders. What and a week I see, to come back to. I see six helmets down there. And pass intended for Hunter Shanelob incomplete. Kasten is looking to punt. I w wouldn't be surprised if Pioneer just sent everyone to see if they can block the punt. But then again with Ezra back there returning the way he did earlier. Yeah, they're going to send him back. Yeah, if he could return from his own 15, mm -hmm. he's doing okay from. This was an even better punt this time. Shane Lobb trying to block, and we got Lee. And oh, he's still quite. driving. He's mm -hmm. close. Wow, that was a drive. Uh, he's between the five and the 10 down there. Nope. I don't know exactly where. Well, he's between the five and the goal line. It looks like he's down at the two. I think I just heard somebody else up here in the press box say the two or the three. I'll tell you, it's starting to, uh, I don't want to say it the way I'm going to say it, but it's starting to look like men playing against boys awfully quick here in this game. So we have Pioneer here again in the traditional wing tee, tight end right, two wings. One wide receiver way out here to the left. Wonder if we'll see another waggle play. Nope, we'll see the, the cross block play and that's Wireman in for the end six points. We out of the first quarter yet? No, 432 left in the first. We're at 20 to zero. 28. 28, oh, I must have. Fell asleep yeah, there for a sec. I blinked. That's been about as how, how yep. fast it's been tonight. Yep. We 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 don't have eight minutes going off the clock yet. And there's the rocket pitch, and good for two. That's Logan Smith, sophomore here. Thirty zero. It says thirty six. Thirty five point thirty five. 35 point deficit. That'd be something to go running clock in the first. Uh, that would be. Be the first time I've ever seen it. That's a dubious honor. Yep. But I'd rather that than to prolong the game and Oh, absolutely. And I've heard this this 35 point running clock rule called the pioneer rule. For a reason. Oh, yeah. They had some, what, 80 nothing games yep, last season? Yep. And. Multiple. And you can go on uh, John Harrell's website and you can see the seasonal average spread per game. Right. And I believe so far we're at in the mid 30s for, for an average game in Indiana is the 30 point difference. Right. Which doesn't bode well for the competition of the of football, but. Right. This isn't, you know, big time Division One Alabama Clemson football. This is, we have to play what we got. Right. You know, we can't just go out and pick up a five star athlete that's going to transcend our program. You know. Absolutely. Well, and once again, if you if you're in the position of the Comets and you get that athlete, who is the entire defensive line going after? Because <laughs> even if you don't break them for the season, if you break them for the night, you yeah. shut down that yep. offense. Yep. So. 
That's where, once again, that bench depth, depth becomes yep. so important. Good deep kick. That was by a die. This time, Tim Lee picks it up. Manages to spin out of one tackle, goes down at the 30. That's a pretty nice return. Of course, Tim Lee being one of the newcomers you mentioned, junior yep. from Texas, I believe, right? That sounds right. That was a nice spin on it that. It was. And to stay up, too. Looked like his teammate helped him, but he can take what, take what you can get in a game like this. Yeah. Well, you know, it's good to have that an infusion of some Texas football because mm -hmm. they – Yep. Fr Friday nights are a religious ceremony yep. in Texas. Matter of fact, a lot of places south of Mason-Dixon, it was mm – -hmm. To Here. say that you didn't have a college team when I was living in Chattanooga, that was <laughs> that was about blasphemy. It looks like Kasson's going to fumble it here, and Pioneer's wave, and they got it. Looked like they went to do the that jet sweep play where the guy coming in motion catches the snap and takes off and runs, but it looked like it was mistimed. And that's not the first time we've seen that play mistimed this season. I think it was against Judson they ran that again, and then the same thing happened. Well, and then we had the incident, I think it was last Friday, against Triton, where we had we had a fellow go in motion, wasn't supposed to go in motion. Yep, I, yep. I got the inside scoop on that later. So I said, <laughs> what What was going on there? He hit it with his knee, and they're like, oh, he wasn't supposed to go in motion in <clears> that play. <throat> oh, okay. And again, fullback motion to the left. I'd expect to see the rocket play to the left. The toss play, and they toss it to the fullback, and he's got Good a blocking. bunch of lead blockers. And that was 67 Hickle, Hickle there, with a nice low tackle. Took him out around the five yard line. Keep your eye on that when they have that fullback step over. I would expect them to run a play. You know, get him right. out in front, lead block. Last time. You know, they tossed it to the fullback, but the time before that, they tossed it to the wing back, sent in motion, and they had the fullback lead. Now that, I do remember that being an old Mike Johnson play that's right. he's been calling for the last 30 years. So I wonder if him and Coach Coach Barry shared the playbook. Could well be. Oh, oh we a got fumble. a fumble there and, and covered up covered. by the comments. That was Von Tobel Sr. fumbling that one. Covered up there by Caden Webb once again. Right. That freshman the pulling his man. weight. And here's the thing. He's not – I mean, he's gotten bigger this year. He got really big over the summer compared to what he was at as an eighth grader. Yeah. Um, but he's down here on the roster at 5'6", 145. Uh, and I don't know how accurate that is, yeah. but I know he's got some wheels on him. Mm -hmm. Now we have the Comets taking over. Schaefer in the gun, Smith to his left. Still gonna run it with Smith. Oof, and Smith taken down behind the line of scrimmage. It was number like. 51. I don't have a 51 here on my roster for Pioneer. No, oh, he got taken down right at the line of scrimmage. Nope, nope, now they're moving him back. <laughs> Plays with my emotions when they <laughs> when they change the down marker before moving the post. Again, we have Schaefer in the gun. Smith to his left. Three minutes here in the first. They throw it to Smith, and uh, he's. I don't know if he got back to the line of scrimmage on that either. I I don't think he did. It was. We had a little bit of forward motion on that pass, but uh, most of that was lateral. You know what we haven't seen tonight is that the the long bombs to Shane Law, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I've not seen that. I wonder with the uh, backfield here for Pioneer if Coach Sulcum just aired on, on the cautious caution. side, yeah. As Landon here has to roll out. And oh, and he can run. We've said he, it in the. He had an opening. Yep. We've said that in the past few weeks why Landon hasn't been running more, and he picks up a first down there. 
That's that the. A, uh, that was a good run by the young man. Absolutely, that's the first earned first down. Yep. That first, the Comets. Is that the first bit of positive yards the Comets have had tonight? Mm, yes, it is. <laughs> With the exception of the uh, Tim Lee on that kickoff yep. return. It's uh, it's been a rough night. Yep. Um, as a matter of fact, I wouldn't swear whether or not they're in positive yardage yet, <laughs> even with that. A nice run, though, by Landon Schaefer. Yep. I was hoping Coach Slocum would utilize his ability to run more often. Now, of course, it looked like the pocket broke and he just scampered off for right. a first down. See, we have comments calling the timeout. Uh, yeah, it looks like it. So we're going to take this opportunity to step away for this word from our sponsors. You're watching Panthers and Comets football on Caston TV on RTC TV4. Whatever phone fits your style, RTC Fiber Communications can save you money when you switch to VoIP. VoIP is a phone service that leverages the power of the internet to save you money on your monthly phone bill. Same great service at a fraction of the cost. Contact RTC today to find out more about this money-saving offer. Online at www.rtc1.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are coming back to a rough story for the Comets here tonight. 141 left in the first. Pioneer 30, Comets 0. And uh, the Comets just had a, a little bit of magic happen for yep. him as Landon Schaefer, uh, he got bogged down in the pocket, didn't have time to pass, but things opened up. He had a route and grabbed the Comets yep. first down. You can see it looks like Pioneer's just running man-to-man -man defense, so they don't have any eyes on the quarterback. So if Landon has a lane, he could easily make it five, seven, ten yards before Pioneer turns and sees you know what's going on and right. sees him running down the field. So I wonder if Pioneer's going to have, you see number 14 standing there, I wonder if he's going to spy him. That's Von Tobel. And that's what he's doing. He's following the quarterback. And, yeah, he's going to get him. Schaefer makes it just about to the line of scrimmage. I'm not sure if he fell a little behind it or not. Hey. You got a yard. We're inching our way back to a positive yardage here for Kasten. Those short little plays will do it, but they've got to be a little more than a yard. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing, though, is that it's all good and fine to run your quarterback with keepers and all mm -hmm. that, but the more he's got a hold of the ball, the more likelihood he has of getting hurt. Yep. And being a young, young athlete, as low, you see. Low catch on that snap and big pile. Yeah. Yeah, being a young athlete like that, you don't want to get get you know get him beat up too badly here in the his right. start of his young career, which is hopefully long and uh, yeah, I, I don't know what I want to say, long in <laughs> prosperity, I guess, right. prosperous. Thirty seconds left in the first. See, Castle lost what six, five yards on that play. Yeah. So yeah. we have trips coming to the right. Panthers aren't, I don't think, are going to let them uh, do many more quarterback keepers for a little bit. Yeah. See, uh, Von Tobel standing there. He's going to keep spying the quarterbacks. Number 76. Whoa. That was a bad snap. Ball left on the field there. Saw number 76 there, Colby Juby. He's a senior. He's flying upfield. Is it that defensive tackle? Ten seconds. You think they're going to put six more on the board before the first? That'd be... Oh man, that we'd have a running. We'd have to have a running clock as soon as that happens. Being someone that is an alum from Caston, I don't like seeing that, but I mean this I wonder if Pioneer can kind of just do what they want at will here. Nope. And he's not going to get it. Nope, number 20 there. Uh, he's going to pick up about 6 yards instead of those 6 points. Noah Pearson, and there's the end of the first. What a brutal first it was for the Comets. Mm -hmm. uh, score there at the end of the first is 30, or is Pioneer 30, Comets zero. And uh, Pioneer will start the second quarter on about the Comets 12 yard line, I think. Oh, 14 is what the scoreboard says.
Well, Alex, I'll tell you what, here between the quarters, how about we give our viewers a break to go grab themselves a snack? That we'll sounds, be right back. You're watching Casting TV on RTC TV4. Slow download, constant buffering, Wi-Fi dead zone? Let RTC help. The customer support team at RTC Communications is here to help you with your internet connectivity. Hi, I'm Bonnie, one of the support team members here at RTC. For a small fee, RTC offers a Wi-Fi health check where we will evaluate your in-home Wi-Fi network and assist you with common issues. See what RTC can do for you. Give us a call today. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Getting ready to head into the second here at the Common Crater. I'll tell you, I remember in my playing days that this is one of the worst moments. As you see Cass in here huddled up still at the wrong side of the field as every quarter we switch. Right. Now they've got to do the sprint down here, get set, and then go play. While yep. Pioneer's been standing here taking a couple breaths, getting settled down. Right. Tell you that sun went down quickly. Yeah, it did. I, I was just thinking that the sun's low enough now that we don't have any shadows on the field. Yep. Makes it a little easier for us to see. I'm sure it makes it easier for the players. Mm -hmm. They don't have to turn, and especially the wide receivers, you're turning and you're looking back at the quarterback, and all you see is the sun there in yeah. your eyes. So here we have the traditional wing tee set. And that's the old trap play. He's got another. Seven yards, it looks like. That was uh, Wireman again. Oh, it got a little more than seven. Yeah, He's quite a bit. So now we have what? First and goal from the four? From the three is what the scoreboard says. So we have Ezra under center. Two tight ends. They're going to run trap right again. Right up the middle. I mean. And that'll uh, get the clock running. Either way, uh, Wireman just found straight hole. Yep. I mean, there was. Well, I wonder at this point how tired those guys are for casting already, having to run up and down the field. They have no, almost virtually no subs. Right. Yeah, once again, I, I think I saw six helmets here on the sideline. Mm -hmm. Of course, we see Pioneer subbing in and out frequently. Right. So we have our waggle play. Ooh, collision oh. there in the end zone. The helmet comes off, and oh, he's he looks like he's hurt pretty bad. I didn't see a number. Is that number 10? That's Wireman. Well, while they're getting this all sorted out, we're going to step away. Stay tuned. You're watching Comets and, Pi and Panthers football on Cast and TV on RTC TV4. Upgrading your RTC internet can really rev up your Wi-Fi. Here's why. Wi-Fi is a stream of data flowing through your home, and each online device removes a portion of that data, which can slow you down. Luckily, small changes make a big difference. First, choose the fiber internet speed that's right for you. Upgrade to a whole home mesh Wi-Fi network and secure your network with a password. Contact RTC Fiber Communications to get your Wi-Fi up to speed. I don't think of this as a high school weight room. It's more like a high school classroom. I'm learning how to manage my time here. I'm learning that it's important to have goals and that it takes persistence and commitment to reach them. And I'm learning that the best way to lead is by example. Indiana High School Sports. They're more than just a game. Come and see me play. <laughs> Neighbors help each other. It's how our community works. And it's how we do business at RTC. We know you count on us for fiber internet, TV, and phone service backed by friendly local support. Your hard-earned dollars stay right here as we invest in our community, our people, and smart technology. RTC Fiber Communications. We're your hometown communications provider, working hard to be a good neighbor. 
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Derek Weirman was just able to be helped up in the end zone and walk off the field under his own power. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, that's that's a better thing than it could mm -hmm. have been. And that's something you really, really hate to see as a coach or a fan of Pioneer. You know, there really no contest tonight here so far in this game, and you end up with an injury running into your own guy. That's you never want to see that happen. Oh yeah, and you know, a concussion at this point in the season. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. And I believe Pioneer has 4A Crispus Addicts next week coming to Royal Center. That should be a good game from a team coming out of Indianapolis. Right. So hopefully he can get cleared up and ready to play as soon as possible. Yeah, hopefully he uh, measures the baseline and yep. he's all good. Here's we have Smith returning. Ev evades one tackle, yep. goes down at Comet's 30-yard line. Yep. And Alex, it looks like possibly that 35-point uh, rule might be second half only. Really? <clears throat> well, we haven't encountered it this early in a game before. Right, right. So. Yeah, this was kind of uncharted territory, at least in our experience. Yeah. Maybe not in the state so far, but this could be the first time that they've hit that. Mm-hmm. Did anybody in the States hit that this season? So here we have Schaefer in the gun. They hand it to Smith and... Taken down well behind the line of scrimmage yep. there at the Comets 28 yard line. So we have Tim Lee running off the field. The old-fashioned way of calling in plays. <laughs> Tell the player, have him run it into the huddle. So here we're going trips left. Smith to his left. Schaefer's got to run. And he finds Smith. And he's going to make some moves. Smith. Down the sideline. That was number 20. Noah Pearson there taking him down after, all. Oh, I don't know, about 30 yards. Smith, 20 yeah. yards. Getting down uh, nearly to the 50-yard line. If so that was around the 45. Excellent by landing there to have the whereabout to see Smith mm -hmm. as he's running. Do so you think uh, you know you see it all the time in the pros and in big-time college football? A big problem with these quarterbacks is when they scramble, they don't look downfield to throw the ball. Right. They, they just want to run it themselves. Yeah. But, what What can I do with yeah. this? But where can, where a, can I go? Yeah. Did a great job of looking. Found the open guy and. Paid off big for him. Great situational awareness by Smith, Schaefer's going to run again. And that might be another Comets first down, yeah. Alex. They're rolling a little bit here. A couple of nice plays there by the Comets, getting the crowd fired up. I'd like to think they're in positive yardage now after a... I, I can't imagine that they're not. I mean, they, they've had a couple of sacks, but yeah. nothing... You know, no, like, quarterback ran 30 yards down the backfield right. or anything. <clears throat> uh, anyways, I was saying, though, not only great wherewithal by Schaefer, but great wherewithal by Smith. Yeah, to uh, turn around, see the uh, quarterback, quarterback needed help, and yeah. So here we have Smith on the, on the lead play. That was a hard yard. Yeah. Had a couple Pioneer Panthers there waiting for him. I'll tell you, I've noticed watching so much different level of football that a big crutch that a lot of great defenses have is a quarterback that can run because it adds, and it looked like he fumbled it. Yeah, Pioneer's got that one. Oh, that's I don't a know if he was shame. ruled down. Nope, they're going to give it to Pioneer. That's a terrible way yep. to end such a nice couple of plays. You see, Coach Slocum's not too happy about that one. <laughs> the hat's off. Yep. <laughs> it's not good. 
was uh, was that Rockwell for Hickel? It was uh, something seven. I didn't see if it was 67 or 87. Well, it had to have been Rockwell because you can't hand the ball off to a lineman. You're going to have the Buck Sweet play. That was Pearson. Somebody got a hold of his leg in there and put Pearson on the ground. I didn't look, but is number 10 out there on the field, or is, do you think his night's done? I would imagine after a bell ringer like yeah. that, his night's done. They might run uh, again with, uh, and I think we said this off the air, uh, Jordan Weitzel is the trainer for both schools. Mm -hmm. Uh, so she may have access to that baseline. Yep. They, they may run a concussion protocol yep. before they leave here tonight. I'm, I... He's out there. He's got the handoff, and he's... Well, look at me being wrong again. <laughs> I'm just going to hang up this uh, headset here and let you handle this. <laughs> yeah, maybe you're right. They got the baseline test, and he cleared it. And who knows what kind of injury he had. A headache. I'm yep, yep. I mean, if he doesn't have a headache, then... <laughs> Well, yeah, I don't know. I was going to say the clock's running, but they just ran. Yeah. yeah. Pioneer gets set. Two tight ends. No, one tight end. So they run the cross block play. And that's Wireman. He got There's no first 13 down. yards out of that. You know, Coach Ulrich here is the uh, defensive coordinator. Used to be the head coach for the Comets a long, long time. Used to run wing T. I'm. Sure, he pulled into his old memory bank of knowledge here to teach these young, you know, young comets how to defend the wing tee since he's been coaching it and coaching against it for a long time. Right. Well, and we said it uh, last week or a couple weeks yep. ago. Wing tee was Indiana football yep. for a long time. Yep. You see, here we have that cross block play again. Wireman again. And that's another Panthers first down. Yep. You know, it, and he had three Comets defenders on him yep. there. I mean, he fought for that yardage, but. Yeah, that's one thing I've noticed over the years looking at Pioneer football is they, from top to bottom, senior down to freshman, you're expected to be in the weight room every day all year round, and you're expected to, you know, make progress and be physically fit right. and active all year round. And then that's, the buck you know, sweep again. Smith manages to wrap him up around the uh, waist, and it looks like he stopped him at about the two-yard line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as, you know, going back, uh, now that I think as a, as a track and field coach, thinking of all of the football players who are then phenomenal sprinters yep. or e even uh, – 3,200 runners yep, or, or, shot, put or and shot put and disc. Yeah, absolutely. That, that all just kind of clicks into yep, place right there. Yep. And um, so here we got Pioneer getting ready. And that was number 20, Noah Pearson. Pearson. On the old Buck Sweet play. The score is 42 to zero. 613 left in the half. And the clock's not running. No, sir. I think the state might want to take another look at that rule. I don't know that they anticipated very many times that it would happen yeah. in the first half. Yeah, first quarter nonetheless. Not quite, very beginning of the second. <laughs> and there he is across yeah, the line. Logan Smith for Pioneer getting the two point. Which brings us to 44 to Zero. I don't know. If I was Tony, I would just start calling pass plays and telling Landon if he could scramble around and make it backyard football, that might be our best chance here. It'd be – I've, I've got to say, just thinking of pioneer football in the last several years, sometimes the goal becomes score against them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and that's, that's mm -hmm. you know – Comments, guys. If you're watching this later, that's not me drinking the haterade. Look at <laughs> look at the dominance that the Pioneer football program yep. has had, and I'm not just saying Caston. There were a lot of schools last season yeah. 
that their one goal was to put points yep, on the board. Yep. And when you're facing such a dynasty, it, it you know, it, four years ago it was a dynasty in the making, and they went to state and lost. And then the last three years they've just rolled everyone over and had come away with three state championships. Right, and and once again, and now we see them ranked number two in two A. Yep. Uh, I mean. I don't know what what are the odds, and I guess this early in the season still we can't start putting odds on this. Right. But in my mind, what are the odds that they end up moving to three A yeah. off of points? Well, I think they just need to make one semi-state appearance to stay in two A, which is very likely. I mean, only really their sectional I think boils down to them and Lewis Cass. Right. So here we have another great kick. It rolls into the end zone. Of course, I don't know if you followed up on Lewis Cass any since their opener against Pioneer, but they've had some impressive victories, putting up 60 points in the last couple of weeks. Now, I, I had not followed them, but I once again, I recall when I was in high school going to Logan Sport that they were always mentioned yeah. right up there um, with Pioneer football and Lewis Cass football. Yep. Uh, Logan Sport, when I was there, I, we didn't have a terrible football team, but it was definitely more about basketball. Yep, yep. Um, so what years did you go there? Uh, 96 to, uh, well, I, I transferred to a different school in 99, I, class of 2000. So. See, I think it was, in, as we have Cass in here getting in the shotgun, I think it was 04 when Lewis Cass went to state, actually. Right. They, they had a pretty good program for a long time. So we got... What, a yard and a half from yes. Smith there? Sam's going to be hurting a lot for the rest of this weekend yep. for a handful of yards. Yep. Wow, he had that big play here a little while ago. Um, Him and Landon. Well, I know that Coach Jones is a throwing coach. Is Coach Jones one of the football coaches at Lewis Cass as well? Um, I don't know about Jones, but I know it's Phillips. Okay. Okay. I, I know that uh, the only reason I know that there's a Jones who's a throwing coach, and I thought he was involved with the football program. Here, here we have the options. Nice. And Jones, or Jones, nope, Smith lowering his yep. shoulders, and uh, looked like he might have moved the yard another marker another couple hard, tough, earned yards. Anyway, uh, Brady Jones, of course, was mm -hmm. previous uh, Comets head coach. Yep. And uh, his dad, I, again, I know coaches yep. track and field up there, and I thought he was in the football program. Yep. I could probably text Brady and find out, but it's a Friday night. I'm sure he's, he's <laughs> busy with his own football yep. now. So here we have the Comets back in the gun. You see on the far side of the field, they're matching height with height there. Oh, and oh. it's a fumble. Schaefer uh, getting that snap at yep. about his knees. And that was... Von Tobel just running up the oh, field. Just, yeah. Well, Kasten loses quite a bit there. I don't know. I'm starting to wonder if they're teetering around that zero yards so far. I mean, it's got to be close. Yeah, we'll follow up with that with uh, with uh, Coach Rumble yep. up here running the uh, stats at halftime. Sir Kasten's going to punt all in a back right block back into him and kicked it right into his own guy and Pioneer's going to scoop and score that. Just over four minutes left here in the half and uh, Pioneer now up at 50, going to go for 52 I'm going to imagine. Yep. At, at what point if you... You, I don't know, maybe they don't even have a kicker, but you just start bringing your kicker out for kicking practice. Well, you've got a, is it Ezra, number 15? It's a die that's been kicking off. Maybe you'd let him get a couple, I don't know. I, you know, and my thought is at this point you, you start just, again, giving people yep. live practice. We, yep. we talked about that uh, uh, last week. Yep. So your Pioneer goes for two, and, that's and there's Wireman in. So that brings us what? That's a 52 50. to nothing with 413 left in the half. That's uh, 
quite the incredible, quite the incredible half that Pioneers yeah. had. A punt and return. They've had a punt block, passing, rushing, touchdowns, multiple fumble recoveries. They don't have an interception yet. Landon's uh, being smart with the ball, runs it when he's available. And he's had a couple of nice looking yep. passes. And honestly, thinking back, I don't recall any close call interception, missed nope, interceptions. Nope. Um, you know, and a couple of weeks ago, we saw where he kept going for that slant route that was getting picked off. And we, yeah, yep. we've not seen a lot of that. And we have seen the ball in the air for the Comets. Yep. So it's not that there hasn't been opportunity. He's just, Schaefer's been playing some a smart passing yep. game. We also haven't seen that deep ball to Shane Lobb called yet, or if it's been called, it hasn't been thrown. Right. I wonder. I don't think that I've seen Shane Lobb go deep on a route yeah. yet. I mean, so I don't know if it's that they're keeping things short on purpose. Mm -hmm. It's hard saying. So we see now Coach Slocum taking the headset off. I think at this score at this time, it's more about coaching moments in the game than it is game strategy that you've done all week. Right. Making sure the young guys keep their heads up. Smith here to return it. Lowers his shoulders and just dives into yep. the defense. He still got about five yards after that first impact yep. though, so. Now I'm thinking Smith's one of those guys that if you went to any of these other schools that are on cast and schedule, he would be a starter to just about all of them. Right. He's just a super athletic guy. You were talking about Landon Schaefer and, and mm -hmm. you know, making him making sure that play hard now but also preserve a future. Yep. I mean, that's another guy I could see playing college ball somewhere. Yep. Um, see, he's listed. We keep bringing up his height and weight every week. He's listed at 5'11", 185. I still, I don't know if, I think they're lowballing him there. So here's Schaefer rolls to his right and he throws. Just a little Lee. high, yeah. Pass intended for Tim Lee. I'm thinking these designed rollouts here are what's gonna bode the best for Caston, but as we saw against Judson, you call one play too many times, the defense just sort of yep. knows. And with a team that has the football IQ of Pioneer. Yeah, yeah. That, and that's the other hard part. You have to keep mixing it up. You mm -hmm. have to, you can't just have one go-to, which we've seen a lot of play variety out of yep. Caston this season. Um, last season, the, the one play that sticks in my mind. There ooh. we have an interception. That's number 44, and he's going to be in the end zone. And that's all the way. Wyatt Marshall there, junior. Schaefer was trying to thread the needle with that pass there, and that's its always a dangerous yep. gamble. Uh, you know, once again, there's that freshman, you got to build up that football IQ. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I wonder how much time each individual player for Pioneer spends watching film. I'm sure they watch not only their game coming up this week, but they're watching, you know, Notre Dame. they got a good friend that plays up at Notre Dame. Right. And they, you know, they're fans of the Colts and the Bears, and they're watching football, you know, every day of the week, going to watch college football on Saturdays, watching the pros. Right. It's eat, sleep, football, repeat over in Royal Center. And there was uh, number 20, Noah Pearson, for the two. So we're now Puts at 60. 60 and zero. So what are the odds of that spread now from John Harrell? Oh, uh, well, did he lowball it? He lowballed it. You know, and I'm not sure what formula they use to come to those mm -hmm. numbers. Because he is usually pretty close. Yeah. Of course, once again, just because of proximity, this be this has become a rivalry. Mm -hmm. I, even though it really is a one-sided. Yeah, it is, but it's just because. If you share a border, all your kids, you know, they see each other in passing. You go to the career center, they play each other in every sport. Right. They've been in the same conference. 
is two rural schools, yeah. so they're both in FFA stuff yep. together. Both schools are in FFA stuff together. Yep. So, yeah, that that's going to naturally, again, that goes back to the off-field camaraderie that mm -hmm. these two schools have that a lot of football players never would have. That's right. something, uh, me as a runner, there's a lot of camaraderie in the mm -hmm. running sports because yep. we're all just torturing ourselves together. <laughs> <laughs> the football players, it's all about aggression towards that other team. Yep. And so a lot of times that – that results in mm -hmm. animosity where guys just can't stand football players yep. from other schools. And I, this generation of Comets and, and Panthers, I mm -hmm. don't think have that off the field. Right. Um, so, and part of that is, I think it's to a couple of groups of by and large stand up guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I heard that uh, in four years of something that nobody could believe with the caliber of player that he was in four years of pioneer football, Nobody had a bad thing to say about Jack Kaiser. Right. Here we got Smith for the Comets letting that one go. Uh, yep, that's a penalty there on the Panthers. That, uh, that'll start the Comets off at the 30 maybe. Of course, a kick if a kick goes out of bounds, it's uh, an illegal procedure by the kicking team. That... uh. Kick had a lot of arc to it, and yeah. now I'm looking over here at the flag. Old Glory blowing behind the scoreboard, <laughs> and uh, the Comets had a, a little bit of help from on high with that mm -hmm. one as that crosswind just started arcing it. That goes back to that football IQ, though. Good play. A, a lot of players would have tried to snag that, yep. and Smith saw what was coming and made, took advantage of yep. that to get better field position. Well, you see he still turned and chased it down because – with the uh, you know the oblong shaped ball, you never know when it's going to hit and just stop dead. So, right. So he made the right call as landing here throws, and that's complete. To that number two. Oh, and the ball goes flying. Man, Piner is great at punching the football out. Yes, that was number two, Greg Brawl. He saw that. I mean, that must have been a pro boxer worthy uppercut <laughs> there to send the ball halfway into right. the stands. Right. I think Brault's just thankful it didn't hit him in the chin. <laughs> 3.48 left in the first half here. Mm -hmm. Pioneer 60, Comets 0. So here we have trips left for the Comets. Smith to the right of Schaefer in the gun. Oh, and he's going to be eaten alive. Covered up. Oh, he's going to keep keep his feet chopping, but he's going to lose about four. I when couldn't tell. It looked like almost the whole defensive line for Pioneer was there. That, yeah. The uh, Comets offensive line developed a leak, and then that leak became a deluge yeah. there. <laughs> Here we have chip trips, not chips. We have trips <laughs> to the boundary across the field. Smith to the right. Landon's going to throw. He's got a quick pass. Ooh. No, I don't know. Are they going to call that intentional grounding? I did, I did not see a Comets receiver anywhere close to that. Well, I think in this game you'd just let it go. Maybe if it were 21 to 20, but I don't know. I don't see a flag on the yep. play, so. They're just going to let it go. Yeah, I couldn't tell either. It looked like Kasson's wide receivers are running down the field, and Landon only threw it about five yards downfield. We're going to punt it again. And a really good punt this time to Wireman. We have great blocking downfield by Pioneers. Wireman gets taken down after. Shane Lobb. About 30 yards. Well, after Shane Lobb missed that one tackle on uh, Llewellyn, he uh, he wasn't let Wireman pass on this one. Hit him so hard he's having to adjust his gloves down there on the field. <laughs> 242 in the half.
With Kesson getting set, Pioneer in the wing tee is that's Lon Tobel at the quarterback spot. That's Wireman wow. picking up about 15. And that's it. Goes back to that bench depth. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a couple of guys that were saying more than others on Pioneer, but there's a lot of different names yeah. as we. Again here, it's gonna be Von Tobel at quarterback, and it looks like he's gonna be content with letting the clock run a little bit. And he hands it off here on the off tackle plane. Comments are gonna be there. That's uh, Pearson. Still got a couple yards out of that carry. Well, it seems like Pioneer's pretty content with just letting the clock run here. Yeah, 146 and the half. Of course, when you've got a 60 point advantage, if you're doubling the state average spread here. <laughs> and it would just look bad on them if they just ran to the line, ran a play, you know, just went right. for the score. That'd be a little bit too much. It, it, there comes a point where sportsmanship comes into play yeah. and, or, or into question. Yeah. And uh, rivalry or not, proximity or not, there just comes a point where it's. There's the cross block. With Wireman getting Wireman once again grabbing a first down. As we're entering what? We under a minute yet? Not one uh one ten left in the half here. You know I think Pioneer gets another score on the board here before. I could definitely see that. And it's been a rare touch by Wireman that doesn't result in a first down tonight. Yeah. Um, the Comets have shut him down at seven yards a couple of times, mm -hmm. but a lot of times he's getting 11 to 15 yep. yards on those carries. That just goes to show how great the blocking is up front for Pioneer if they're able to open the gap and block downfield. So we have Von Tobel letting the clock run down. And that's Smith, Logan Smith, getting Oh, 10 yards, 11 yards. Oh, and we've got uh, Caden Webb holding a shoulder. Hopefully he's able to uh, walk that off. Mm -hmm. So we enter the last 25 seconds. We see Pioneer sideline heading to their corner of the end zone. Yeah, Pioneer's going to let the clock run out, and they're going to go into the locker room with a 60-0 to 0 advantage. Stay tuned for second half play here as we uh, and wind down. We will start the second half of the running clock, I do believe. I, if we don't, then something has gone very <laughs> wrong somewhere. So, hey, go ahead, uh, get your break, pop your popcorn for the second half, come back here uh, to watch the conclusion as the Panthers come and visit here at Caston. Yep. Thanks for watching this. You're watching Comets TV, or you're watching Caston TV on RTC TV4. RTC Cable subscribers, now you can watch your favorite cable networks wherever you are, on your phone, tablet, or computer. Just log on to www.watchtveverywhere.com. Enter your RTC account information and sign up to watch TV everywhere. Live sports, videos on demand, and more, all for free with your RTC Cable subscription. Watch TV everywhere, another great service from RTC. Want to know what I like best about playing basketball for my high school? I like it because it's a place where my friends get to see me play. I like it because I'm playing for someone besides myself. I'm playing for everybody in my school and every person in my community. Indiana High School Sports. They're more than just a game. Come and see me play. The RTC TV4 family of networks allows you to watch nine local television channels dedicated to coverage of our schools and our communities directly on your mobile device through our new app. Just look up RTC TV4 at the App Store or the Google Play Store. There is no cost to download the app or cost to view the live channels. With a paid subscription, you can also view any of our past videos on demand whenever you want. 
Download the app today and start watching. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, hope your snacks and beverages were great. Mm -hmm. uh, we got a chance to stretch our legs a little bit. And uh, speaking of stretching, guys are on their field doing their three-minute post-halftime stretch. And uh, we talked to, um, well, he's not the athletic director anymore, is he? No, Mr. he's, uh, Mr. Evans is now just the principal. Our new athletic director this year is Josh Overmeyer. Uh, of course, he is working in concert with Mr. Evans to ensure a smooth transition there. And it's it's been a, a good fit so mm -hmm. far. But, um, yeah, talking just. <laughs> Told us about the. Uh, was it the I don't know I don't know the name of the rule, but it's a 35-point rule. Um, won't take effect until the second half. Uh, as you said, I'm sure the state didn't envision on a 35-point deficit at the end of the first quarter. So right, right. Or honestly, uh, even last week against Triton, it it was most of the way through the third, if I recall yep, correctly. Yep. Um, North Judson was a running clock the whole second half, yep. but it was right at the end of yep. the second quarter that we hit those numbers. So it's I'm going to guess that this is going to be a rarity yeah. uh, once again with a, a powerhouse. Uh, a, a team that was great in 1A and is going to be great again in 2A. And so, yeah, and then you're playing a, a school that's – I looked at the numbers last year, and these numbers don't – because those were from the previous year mm -hmm. anyway. That's the way the state publishes stuff. Um, but when I was talking to my cross country guys, I think that we were about the 25th smallest school in the state yep. that would be eligible for, um, or that, that was a, a schools I could compare casting mm -hmm. to. And I was doing a different comparison there, um, but you know, so I was I was discounting schools like yep. uh, private schools that can do a little bit of recruiting yep. and things, a little bit of tweaking <clears throat> the numbers. So here we have Kasten getting ready to kick off here to open the second half. This is their first kickoff here in the game. And it looks like Smith kicking the ball. Low kick. That was number 34, Peyton Schmurgle. Schmurple. Schnurple. Schnurple. I went to school with some Schnurple. Oh. I wonder what the odds are that's the same family. That's <laughs> not the most common name. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody in school did that kind of thing to their name. <laughs> See, I'm talking to Steve here. It says Rochester is up 14 to seven over Manchester at half. Tippy Valley was up 14 to six over North Miami at halftime. Some of your regional scores. I'll tell you that North Miami Valley game, that's a huge heated rivalry here in this region. Oh yeah. So we have Pioneer getting set. Is that the JV going in there? That could well be. Uh, Comets doing pretty well against Panthers in the second half. And it's just what we were talking about in the first half. Mm -hmm. With a 60-point spread, there's no reason to not give some people some live practice. Yes, yeah, yep. Here, Steve's telling me last he heard Culver was winning over West Central 22 to zero. Right, so some uh, good numbers there across RTC territories. Yep, yep. And no matter what happened here tonight, an RTC school was gonna win. <laughs> so here we have Pioneer in a third and 12. I well, believe that's, if that's not all JV, it's quite a bit of them. Yeah, here we go. We're looking at the names here. Adam Barry was a quarterback for Coach Johnson. Mm -hmm. Matt Bianco, who is the defensive coordinator, played. And we have an errant pitch here, but that's number 17, Brock Robinson, running around. Josh Lytle, I believe if that's Josh Lytle I'm thinking of, played against me just a few years ago. Right. Ryan Llewellyn, I am sure, is the uh, adopted father of the Twins. And he was, everybody tells me he was a very athletic guy. So you see you have 
We were talking earlier, you have that tree, that family tree that Coach oh, Johnson has created. Generational. Yep. Uh, again, at this point, dynasty is the right word to use. Correction, it's Tippy Valley 14, North Miami 0. I believe that game's at Tippy Valley. I remember that was the game of the year that some guys would be leaving in a hospital. So here we have fourth down and Pioneer does not convert. Nice sack there by uh, Gavin Hickel Hickle. wearing number 54 tonight. That was number 18, Seth Schmel, freshman quarterback. Here, of course, we have the running clock already down past nine minutes. It's amazing the difference that makes. Great catch yep. there, right over the middle. <laughs> hey, maybe we'll get some points on the board here. And there's that long route that we uh, we were talking we're about in the at, first half. For. And there's every likelihood that Coach Slocum was playing it smart with the uh, Football prowess of the Varsity Panthers. Mm -hmm. The odds of nearly bumbled that into oh. an interception. Anyway, those uh, Varsity Panthers with uh, Shane Lobb, as tall as he is, extending out yep. for that. There's just a huge chance of him getting hurt, too, yeah. yep. for something that's, you know. We are in positive yardage. We, we checked that yep. on during halftime. Or at least 23 yards. Well, it's a, and it's a lot more than that now. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, there's there's not a lot of point in having a player that you count. Not that, once again, with only six helmets on the sideline, yep. you count on every player. Yeah. So Landon kind of caught that at his feet. Yeah. Cut the grass a little bit. He's going to get. You got a few yards out of five it. Five anyway. out of that. So we got about a third and five. Mm, maybe about a third and seven actually. Split the difference according to the scoreboard. <laughs> Looks like we got trips going to the left here. Schaefer in the gun, Smith to his left. He's gonna look to pass. He's got Shane Love. Great connection on Is that, that pass. Shane Love's first reception here tonight? Uh, second, I second. think he, he, it was another one right over the middle like that. Here again, Comets are in the gun, trips left. Smith and Schaefer in the backfield. Again, another low snap, and Schaefer's gonna turn and run, and he's got the edge. He's got a touchdown. And there's a touchdown for the Comets. Points on the board for the Comets. That's gotta feel good to him, no matter <laughs> yeah. how you get him. Yep. Schaefer there, looking to pass, pocket collapsed, took off to his left and squeaked in just past the goal line. Now we got Smith getting ready to kick the field goal here. Ooh, oh, a bad and snap and they're gonna pitch it to Smith and now Wow. So uh, how many times do we say something about the snap in that series? Uh, quite a bit. Yeah. And that's got nothing to do with how great Pioneer is. I mean, you're just snapping it low. Yeah. Well, there's a, there's a stop clock in the second yeah. half here. Uh, score is... Uh, Pioneer 60, Comet 6 now. 517 left in the third. Clock's going to stop for a score, an injury, and a timeout. That's 
we met one of the three criteria. But of course, after the kickoff and then the ball gets brought in play, it'll keep rolling. Absolutely. And I see Coach Slocum smiling. He's, I'm sure he's happy to see that. Absolutely. After a couple of scoreless weeks. <laughs> Here we got Sam Smith getting ready to tee off as, uh, again, Pioneers JV runs onto the field. Well, good on the Pioneer coaching staff for not saying, well, they scored on the JV, we're taking the varsity back Get the varsity. And I've seen Pioneer do that many a times. So we get a good shot of the moon back there. You need know, to pass it on to the camera woman. That's, uh, yeah, full moon on Friday the 13th. Yeah. You just don't know what was going to happen tonight. <laughs> so here we're waiting for the officials. And there's the whistle. Smith will boot it. It will be picked up by, I believe, number 24. I think that's what I saw. Cody Legrand. And taken down at Pioneer's 40-yard line. Uh, you know, you, you were just saying that you've seen Pioneer put the varsity back on after JV gets scored mm -hmm. on. And again, with this spread, it's just a great opportunity for these guys to get yep. a level of practice. It, it's different even than going against their own varsity yep. line and scrimmages yep. because... Different energy, different approach. Right. So we got Pioneer under center. They run the cross block play for about three yards. So we're already down to four minutes here in the third. Yeah, because previously this coaching staff of both teams had to agree to a running clock. Yep, Great. yep, yep. So, and you had some coaches that were so stubborn about it, they'd prolong it and you'd have an even bigger score. It's Pioneer running the buck sweep. Is that 17? Brock Robinson, sophomore. Tackle there by number 20, Evan Howard. Uh, first down for the Panthers, though. Picked up about what, 20? Something like that. So we're down now a minute since the last time I mentioned the clock situation. Such a big difference yeah. in, the, in the face of the game. Um, well, there's no reason really, you know, to prolong a game when it's the score like this. I said it last year, uh, commentating with Dakota, that all that does is allow animosity to build yep. up on the field. Yep. Players are going to get frustrated. Yep. And you know as well as I do, Fingers get broken in the bottom of those dog piles. <laughs> yeah. And eyes are eyeballs are very vulnerable, believe it or not. I mean, nothing but perfect sportsmanship. <laughs> no, I just you get to a point you can only put up with so much frustration. Yep, yep. And you've got yep. you've got twenty two guys down there who train yep. day in and day out for aggression. And, and things will happen. Yep. So here is, again, it looks like Pioneer is pretty content with letting the clock run a little bit. Yeah, speaking of that, though, has there been a flag tonight? I don't think so, actually. I think it's been pretty clean. Well, yeah. A very clean game of football. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, there has been a flag. That illegal procedure Pioneer kicked oh, yeah, the ball out of bounds. Out of bounds, yeah. Well, you know it's a... It's a clean game when you've got to think hard to remember the <laughs> one penalty there's been. As opposed to week one when it was Pioneer of West Central, it was a yeah. flag every other play is what I heard. Oh, uh, yeah. And as a matter of fact, there's at least twice that every official threw their flag <laughs> on the same play, sometimes for different penalties. So, again, Pioneer running that buck sweep with Brock Robinson. And he's going to get a first down. 
These JV Panthers are making their way to the end zone. Yeah. And of course, last season we saw Caston play much more competitively against the JV and again, you know, we'll probably see that again this year, especially out of this week and next week and maybe against Knox. Right, yeah, but some of these bigger schools. Yeah, that, yeah, bigger schools, more dedication to their football program. Again, bench depth. I'm, I'm going to keep saying that yeah. because when you can have three Sam Smiths and two Landon Schaefer's <laughs> and then a couple of uh, Hunter Shanlaws. Yeah. So again, they give the – I mean, I think that's the fourth time they ran this play in a row. Just letting Brock Robinson get the ball, cut it up, and run. But yeah, like you were saying, you have so many more athletes, so many more weapons to use. Right. Y your practices can be more – intense because you can rotate so guys are fresher throughout right well and then your game same way yeah if you've got two lines even the quality of Caston's yeah. one line and every couple of plays you put a fresh line out there that's got the same kind of skill set yep that's a touchdown for the pioneer jv here is it as this uh third quarter r comes to a close yeah. We're at 10 seconds here. Looks like we'll be getting out of here pretty early. See if Steve sent me any more updates. Tippy Valley scored 21 to zero over North Miami, 8.16 to go in the third. See, we're not too far ahead of them, it seems like. Yeah. But Caston's been passing the ball a lot. When you throw the ball, you stop the clock and it makes for a longer football game. Yeah. But again, it's a refreshing change from previous seasons where it's been wing T. Yeah, well, and it's been two years since we've had somebody who could reliably. Mm -hmm. Okay, we we've had some good passes, but it hasn't been something that okay we can either go to the air, or go to the ground, mm -hmm. coach. Which way we're we going? There's a fumbled snap. And he's gonna roll, and he's looking to throw, and he's got a couple guys wide open. Uh, no, no, no good on that. Well, here at the end of three quarters, then, it is Pioneer 66, cast in six. One quarter remaining. Let's see, what what was the John Harrell spread? 51-0. I could have swore one of the coaches told me that it was 66. 56-6. 56-6. 56-0. Hmm. We've had some more points scored here than that. So now we get ready to start the fourth quarter. And we'll start out with Kasten receiving a kickoff. Mm -hmm. Maybe they can make a uh, quick work on a few, few drives and... I imagine we might only see two drives out of this quarter, one, one for each team, given how fast it's gone by. See here, they've got the ref hobbling. I wonder if he was in an accident. <laughs> well, I, I do know, um, talked with a few officials, and they really are having a hard time getting younger guys mm -hmm. um, to get certified as yep. officials. Uh, part of it because the... Uh, the fans can be terrible. Yeah. Uh, matter of fact, there's been more than one meeting back at the studio that we've been told refs are off limits. <laughs> and I, I think I've said it almost every game. I don't want to wear the stripes. Yeah. You are uh, you're the spectator's favorite meal when you're wearing yep. those stripes. Oh, and we have an excellent kick. I don't think he's got to pick that up. And he's is that Sam Smith. Not sure who it was. The bounce went a little wonky yeah. on that. Like you were talking when that one rolled out of bounds yep. with that oblong football. It can you just never know when it's going to take that that one bounce that just doesn't make sense. Uh, the, the best part is when you're trying to chase it down and that bounce sends it back behind <laughs> you over your shoulder. So now we got Kasson starting at their own 15. Oh, that's going to be a hard fight. We have an injured 
Comet down here. It's pretty far downfield. I guess I didn't realize it. I can't tell what number that is. Is that one of the Hickles? 67? Yes. Well, he's jogging off on his own will here, so. I wonder if it's a cramp. It could be. Maybe didn't hydrate enough. Today was a little warmer than, yep. it's, than maybe they were expecting. We That was a bad problem in the West Central game. Yep. Uh, I think every player in Comets Red was hurting uh, a little bit. Yeah, they were helped off the field when, and massaged on the sidelines mm. for cramps. Here we see the clock is running. Landon in the gun. They're going to run the option play. And I Smith. Say a Smith making some plays. I think Landon just pitched it a tad bit too early. You want, want to see him bait that defender in a little bit more, make him commit so it, right. so it out positions him on the play. Still got five yards on it. Yeah, good, good run by Smith. Not going to lie, breaks my heart he doesn't run for me anymore. <laughs> he, uh, he did one season of cross country. Was a, actually he did cross country and sixth grade football and just goes back to phenomenal athlete. Yep. Uh, he sprinted for me in uh, track for a while, but f baseball is his true love. We have a oh. pass here, and that's number 17, Brock Robinson with the interception. That was just a matter yep. of leading uh, Shane Love a little bit L too yep. much. Great presence there by uh, Robinson. Robinson, thank you. Great, pre <laughs> great presence of mind there yep. to get those hands up. Yep. Uh, somebody not thinking quite as fast would have just yep. taken that right off their face <laughs> face mask. <laughs> I.e., if I was out there, I would have taken it off the face mask. <laughs> now here we got Pioneer. Tight end wing left. Wide receiver to the right. Is it handed on the cross block? And this is number 34, Peyton Schnurpel. Freshman there getting a couple good yards. Yeah, looks like about five yep. of them. And that interception, I don't know that it could have come with much better field position. No kidding. And the only thing better for him is if he would have been in the end zone by the end of that. Right. Here we go again. Quarterback Seth Schmel, freshman here. And they run the same play, cross block play, and he Schnurple will get a first down. Yeah, about two yards shy on that. I mean, he really got to compliment these young Panthers mm -hmm. out here for it goes back to that football dynasty mentality. Yes, yes. You, you can tell they're out here to win. Yeah, they're, they're thinking they're playing their own game. They don't they're not concerned what the scoreboard says. Oh, and it looks like these young Panthers here are Hit each other a little bit, but uh, oh, we're getting get a fourth down here. Just a yard short, you go for it, right? Yeah, might as well. <laughs> we don't have a field goal kicker, so. <laughs> a yard short and a 60 point advantage, you, you go for it. <laughs> What's the worst that can happen? You turn yeah, it no. over that deep in Comets territory? Yeah, Schmel here, ready to take the snap. And they're just going to keep running that cross block play. And that's a first down. Yeah, that was Schnurple, another freshman. Glad to see Pioneer put the JV in right as the second half started. Yeah, I was I wasn't sure how they'd come out. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen I've seen teams not play their JV until yep. fourth quarter, yep. regardless of their point advantage. Yep. I've, uh, I think that this is the most sporting thing they could have done, and yep. again. Good for their program. Get these guys out there playing football yep. that counts. Yep. You know, a scrimmage against the varsity guys, that, that doesn't count. Ew. Yeah, right. You know, and here on the jet sweep is Robinson. He's close. 
It's like tackled by uh, Hickel. Well, I wonder if the, in the new rule, the 35 point rule, you're allowed to play your JV guys an extra quarter as long as the clock is running. You know, I don't know. I, you know, I'm not sure how that all works because I, I always kind of forget about the, the play time limitations. Yeah, yep. So I think it's five quarters a week. Yeah, that's they've, what it is in basketball. Yep, they've played two here tonight. And I imagine they have a JV game tomorrow morning as well. Right. There they run cross block and Sam Duvall is right there. <laughs> I don't want Sam Duvall grabbing a hold of me and then <laughs> wrestling me to the ground. That's and we have a comet slow to get up here. That, uh, that's Landon. That is not good. No, that's he's holding it. It looks like he's holding his. We got an official timeout. We're gonna step away for a word from our sponsors here, and we will get you updated when we come back. Stay tuned. You're watching Comets and Panthers football on Caston TV on RTC TV4. Upgrading your RTC internet can really rev up your Wi-Fi. Here's why. Wi-Fi is a stream of data flowing through your home, and each online device removes a portion of that data, which can slow you down. Luckily, small changes make a big difference. First, choose the fiber internet speed that's right for you. Upgrade to a whole home mesh Wi-Fi network and secure your network with a password. Contact RTC Fiber Communications to get your Wi-Fi up to speed. There's been a lot of talk lately about net neutrality. At RTC, our customers receive the full and open internet and nothing less. We are not the gatekeeper, toll operator, or curator. A free and open internet has been the single biggest driver of innovation over the last generation. And we want that engine of innovation to live on in our customers. If you ever have a question about your internet service, give RTC a call. We are here for you. I don't think of this as a high school weight room. It's more like a high school classroom. I'm learning how to manage my time here. I'm learning that it's important to have goals and that it takes persistence and commitment to reach them. And I'm learning that the best way to lead is by example. Indiana High School Sports. They're more than just a game. Come and see me play. <laughs> All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Coming back with uh, 5.45 on the clock here. Landon Schaefer was assisted off the field, so don't know what kind of update we're going to yep. have about that. And now Pioneer, fourth and about three, it looks like. As the clock is going to continue to roll here. Well, we got 5.20 left in the game. Score is 66 to 6. In favor of the Panthers. You know, I think also, uh, Pioneer coach, you just use as much of the play clock as you can yeah. every time. Yep. No sense of trying to get anyone hurt here. As that's Brock Robinson there around the outside on the jet sweep, and he's going to be mm -hmm. in for the end zone. He looked pretty quick, if you ask me. Yeah. Yeah. Looking at uh, these younger Panthers, I don't think that uh, this year's graduations are going to hamstring them too much next season. That said, there's a bunch of big names here. We've got uh, Wireman, Von Tobel. Just rolling down through yep, here real Colby, quick. Uh, Juby here, we've seen him in the backfield quite a bit. Yeah, so I mean, we've, we've got some names that we've mentioned a lot yep. here tonight that'll be graduating this year, but. Gavin Hickel absolutely wrecking the quarterback on that two point conversion attempt. Score now 72 to six with 409 left in the game. The Pioneers JV's put up what, two scores? Yep. Kasson's put up one score. So we got, really if we just focus here on the second half, you know, kind of break the tape in half, 
I would assume Coach Slocum would just throw away that first half. I mean, right. Once again, it's a. I'm. I kind of hope he comes up to talk talk to us. Just I mean, we're talking about Class One A state champs who are now in Class Two A, yep. ranked number two currently in Class Two A. I'm curious as to what the strategy coming into the game was. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and you had a weird week with the weather, lightning. Right. Oh, absolutely. There are two days that practice was just not what you wanted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But with Pioneer only being 15 minutes down the road, you'd they have to They had the same kind yeah. of practice week, I'd imagine. Because let's face it, uh, they say that if you if you hear the thunder, you're close enough to be struck by the lightning. <laughs> and 50, you can see a lightning strike 15 miles away in yep. the state of Indiana. Uh, you <laughs> you want to dig into the science, yeah. you, you could have gotten struck. Yep. Yep. You can get struck at Caston with a storm cloud that's over Pioneer. So. <laughs> we have Pioneer set to kick off. Another good kick. Is that Schaefer? I think I saw number four. I wonder if he just got his hand smashed pretty good. Yep, that is Landon Schaefer. Well, that's good news for the Comets. Now, I don't see any tape on him, so he must not again been banged up too hard i have to wonder when when he was slow to get up if coach slocum's heart didn't just sink a little bit skip a couple of beats uh it was once again week one we had aiden sarver injury yep. um, and then your quarterback for the next three years is <laughs> right. punched over it's here now we have the comets in the gun 323 on the clock i wonder if they're going to come out with a little bit of urgency and try to get on the board here quick as another low snap and a good toss. Sam Smith's bouncing around. He's in open field. He's past the 50. He's, he's the still going. He's got three Panthers wow. on him there. Alan, here's our second penalty of the day. I'm going to guess it's going to be a face mask. There's a good chance of that. And he, oh, that was a good run by Smith. Face yeah. mask on the defense. That'll give him another 15. Right, and that was a that was a carry. The line of scrimmage was back at the Comets 35. Yep. He made it clear down here to the 30. Pioneers 30 before being drugged down by his face. <laughs> I wonder how many more he would have got w without yeah. the penalty. Well, he drugged those three Panthers for about five yards there here at oh, the yeah. end. Oh, that was only a five-yard penalty. So here we got... Comments in the gun, Smith behind Schaefer. And another low snap here, Smith gets, Schaefer gets. Wrapped up, yeah. back at the 30. Well, there goes that five yard face mask. Um, who, who do we have at center tonight? Is that? Gearhart. Gearhart. How many snaps is he gonna do this week of practice, you think? I'm sure Coach Slocum will say he's not gonna do enough. <laughs> Tell you that's probably been my biggest biggest uh, critique here of the comments as they get into their trip set that they're hurting themselves with you know low snaps, missing their blocks. Schaefer's going deep to Shane Love. Oh, oh couldn't his quite fingertip. connect that. I'm sure he's hating himself for that one. Smacked right. him right on the hand. That was going to the end zone if he, that pass would have completed. You have number 25 here for the Panthers, Brian Gluth. Looks like Shane Lobb's got about a foot and a half height advantage over oh, there. Oh, yeah. Wonder if Slocum's going to rely on that one again. So here we're now we're under a minute left in the game. Kesson in the gun. Rock Wolf in motion. What do we have? A penalty. My guess is it's a legal procedure for the Comets. Neutral zone infraction. You think so? I didn't see it happen, but it was over on the far. Yep. Looks like you're right. And that does not stop the clock, though. I'm surprised Slocum's not yelling at him to get in formation. No kidding. He'd like to get. Oh, he's going to take a timeout. Whew. 
Kind of wonder if he should have taken that, you know, 20, 30 seconds ago. Yeah, that was – he. maybe he uh, didn't realize that that clock was yeah. still running. Um, Certainly would love to get another touchdown on the board here. To, absolutely. When you're at, what is this, 25-yard line. Yeah. We got what here, second down, third down, and five. 18 seconds left in the game. I mean, this has got to be – a quick snap, it's gotta be a good, good snap. snap. <laughs> Everything has to fall into place mm -hmm. here and the Panthers, this is the uh, Panthers defense time to shine. Yep, yep. You know, again. Well, they've had a. They've had a great night, yep. I'm not, but they can, they can just really change. Yep. Not the outcome of the game, obviously. The, the well, winners decided. <laughs> yeah. But they. But they can end the game on a high note. Absolutely. For, for that's their, that's what JV. I'm trying to say. And here we have that toss play again. Smith. Smith, Smith looking oh, around. Good pass blocking or uh, run blocking. And he's got and it. He's in. We have a penalty, though. I do believe it is illegal in high school football to jump over another player, which is what Smith just did. Yeah. And still to, uh, to drag a guy into the end zone. <laughs> We got 4.5 seconds left. Uh, that's an eternity, right? It can be. It can be. It can be. Depends, depends who's going to start taking their timeouts here in the last 4.5 seconds. Uh, that's a good point. Not only this is the <laughs> third penalty of the game. Yep. It's what, fourth. Third or fourth. Yeah, we, we had the uh, kick out of bounds. Kick out of bounds. We had face the mask. face mask neutral zone infraction, and now this yep. one. And, yes, they're backing up the comments. Yep. You cannot jump another player in high school football. Even though he can do it, he's an athletic kid. Well, and you know, you know that the Smith family sits down for professional football. <laughs> I guarantee you that they sit together and watch uh, Purdue football. Yep. Oh, uh, yeah. You got Mark Smith over there at Purdue right now. He's not, he's not playing, but yep. he's, he's, he's over there. Mm -hmm. That's a Purdue family. They yep. bleed black and gold. Their oldest one, Andrew. Uh, yeah, graduated from graduated there. from Purdue. <laughs> Sam will probably go to Purdue. I've heard rumor that he's looking at the medical field. Oh, so. and that's gonna do it here. Well, what a heartbreaker on that uh, on losing out on that touchdown yep. for Sam Smith. But uh, final score here tonight: uh, Panthers seventy-two, Comet six, and uh, we're gonna. We're going to give Coach Slocum a couple minutes, see if he uh, comes up here to talk with us. Uh, he looks like he's in pretty good spirits. Not quite a bigger spread, but not the same kind of beatdown yep. as we saw yep. last Friday. Yep. So uh, we're going to take, take this opportunity to go catch a few more words from our sponsors and stay tuned for hopefully a post-game wrap-up with Coach Tony Slocum here on Comets TV on RTC TV4. Want to know what I like best about playing basketball for my high school? I like it because it's a place where my friends get to see me play. I like it because I'm playing for someone besides myself. I'm playing for everybody in my school and every person in my community. Indiana High School Sports. They're more than just a game. Come and see me play. Save money when you switch your home phone service to VoIP from RTC. Everyone knows that RTC Fiber Communication is the area's leading provider of high-speed fiber optic internet service. Now, RTC can help save you money on your monthly phone bill by switching your phone over to the internet with VoIP. Same great service at a fraction of the cost. Contact RTC today to find out more about this money-saving offer. Online at www.rtc1.com. Slow download, constant buffering, Wi-Fi dead zone? Let RTC help. The customer support team at RTC Communications is here to help you with your internet connectivity. Hi, I'm Bonnie, one of the support team members here at RTC. For a small fee, RTC offers a Wi-Fi health check where we will evaluate your in-home Wi-Fi network and assist you with common issues. See what RTC can do for you. Give us a call today. Ever 
Ever wonder why your local TV bill keeps going up? The bulk of these increases are due to rising network fees. A few powerful media companies dictate what TV providers must pay to offer their channels to you. And every time networks demand more money, that affects what you pay every month. If TV providers don't meet their demands, networks threaten blackouts. Since 1999, these network fees have increased by three and a half times the rate of inflation. To see what we're doing to keep network fees in check, visit tvonmyside.com. Want to know what I like best about playing basketball for my high school? I like it because it's a place where my friends get to see me play. I like it because I'm playing for someone besides myself. I'm playing for everybody in my school and every person in my community. Indiana High School Sports. They're more than just a game. Come and see me play. RTC Fiber Communications is proud to announce the new RTC TV4 family of networks. Now you can watch nine local video channels dedicated to covering the events that are important to you from anywhere in the world, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And you can watch for free. Just download the mobile app, our new Roku channel, or online at www.rtctv4.com. The RTC TV4 family of networks. Start watching today. Low download, constant buffering, Wi-Fi dead zone? Let RTC help. The customer support team at RTC Communications is here to help you with your internet connectivity. Hi, I'm Bonnie, one of the support team members here at RTC. For a small fee, RTC offers a Wi-Fi health check where we will evaluate your in-home Wi-Fi network and assist you with common issues. See what RTC can do for you. Give us a call today. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Coach Slocum just gestured to me he'd be up in a moment, so thank you for sticking with us. Uh, mm -hmm. Once again, that uh, still a 66-point spread. Yep. Final score tonight was Pioneer Panthers 72, cast and comments 6. Yep. Um, but the real story was the second half, I think. Yep. Um, the first half was just a very dominant it was, it was Pioneer being Pioneer. <laughs> right. State championship, Pioneer yep. team. Um, the second half, though, when they, they took their JV team to the field the whole the whole quarter yep. uh, or the whole half, it was it, it was more exciting football. I've got yep. to say that. As so. we have Coach Slocum here getting ready. Yeah, yep. So Well, Coach, thanks for coming up. Uh, of course, when you come into come into a game where you're playing the Pioneer Dynasty, Pioneer Panthers football being what Pioneer Panthers football has been, what was that? What was the strategy that we, you were going for? Well, we're just trying to get better at our game. Uh, but they obviously make that difficult. I mean, they're the two-time defending state champions in 1A. Uh, they still have a couple dynamic playmakers. And we, we just didn't execute. I don't know why uh, all of a sudden we start fumbling football like we did tonight. But uh, when you're playing Pioneer, you can't have those sort of things. So uh, we'll go back to practice next week. We'll get better, hopefully, and uh, get ready for LaVille. All right. Sounds good. Uh, I'm just, just curious. Uh Alex and I talked about this on air. How many snaps are going to be practiced this week? <laughs> well, yeah, I, I don't know what happened there. Uh, obviously, their defensive line is pretty tough, so it puts a lot of stress Absolutely. Uh, on our center. And, and he's still a young kid uh, playing center for the first time this year. He was a starter at guard last year. Uh, but it, it's just par for the course for tonight. Uh, he usually does a good job, and I expect him to get back uh, to snapping the ball well, and uh, maybe we'll get this offense going. Absolutely. Well, sounds good. Uh, look forward to seeing the comments come out against LaVille. And uh, thank you, as always, for coming up and talking to me, Coach. Thanks for covering the comments. Well, 
Well, thank you for joining us tonight, ladies and gentlemen. If you are Panthers fans, congratulations mm -hmm. on the victory. Yep. If, if you're a Comets fan, join us again next week yep. while we cover uh, Comets and LaVille yep. football. Until then, I'm Blair Zimmerman, joined here by Alex Korn. Yep. And uh, just join us again next time on Cast and TV here on RTC TV4.